silly Bob Arctor. <laughs> oh, oh, hello. <laughs> I didn't see you there. Excuse me while I put down this extremely large and pretentious book that makes me seem about five times smarter than I actually am. I'm so glad you stopped by. So I can personally say, welcome back. Ha, <laughs> yeah, that's gross. <laughs> Hello again, long time no see. Oh my gosh, so much has been going on. But I'm not even gonna start. I'm not even gonna start making excuses for why I haven't been around because all in all, let's hit the ground running. I've got a pretty cool video for you today. So I've been doing some thinking. You don't have to look so surprised. And I realized that at the end of every video, I will tell you, the viewer, that if you have an idea for a video, you can post that idea below in the comments. And that's awesome, and I want you to keep doing that. But what I realized is that that's, that's a lot of videos. So in the future, I'm gonna start doing like a Q&A type thing at the end of my videos where I go into YouTube and I answer all the questions without having seen them prior. So it'll kind of keep me on my toes and it'll be fun. And I'm gonna do that in the future, but right now in the, uh, in the present, I have picked two questions off YouTube and this is a video based around those two questions. The theme of the questions, keeping players engaged. Let's face it, if your players aren't engaged, you're not doing your job. Are you not entertained? No. If you have ever experienced that scene in your life, this video should help you out. So let's do this. Question number one. This comes from a Tommy Middleton, and he asks, Barker, how do I make my NPCs and villains interesting. And I'm like, good question. That's one of the biggest battles we face as GMs. Too often we see the run-of-the-mill NPCs. They all act the same way. I mean, we might flesh out a couple NPCs, if they're like the really, really important ones, but what we fail to realize is that the most important NPCs to flesh out are the ones that don't really matter. Think about it. Your players want to experience realism. And if you've spent an entire week creating this game session, and you know exactly where the players are gonna go and exactly who they're gonna fight and who they're gonna talk to, you're not gonna spend much time thinking about you know, whether the, the barmaid is getting a divorce or whether the bartender is completely racist. And while these attributes might not be critical to your plot, in fact, they're, they're, they're probably not at all, it's these tiny details that immerse your players into the world. And that's what your players are looking for. They're looking for immersion. They want to be in this world. So if you find that one of your players is like constantly wanting to talk to NPCs that you don't think matter, first, that means that you have great players sitting around your table. Everybody wants players like that, they're awesome. And second, it means you need to start thinking on your toes about, you know, NPC traits. And I know that's incredibly difficult and it doesn't really answer your question. So I came up with a tip that I think will help you out. Here goes. Here goes. Make your NPCs and villains flawed. Give them flaws, negative attributes. Too often, when we think of NPCs, we come up with things that make them really cool and we give them attributes that make it more difficult for the players to defeat them or talk to them. So there's that. Now we should kind of do all that stuff, right? We should give the NPCs attributes that make things more difficult for our players because the game should be a challenge. But by giving our NPCs flaws also, we are giving our players a way to exploit those flaws and therefore uh, defeat the villain, or talk the security guard into giving the players information about this new kind of slightly mysterious uh, group that has recently come into town. In honesty, I think the best way to do this is just to make a list of flaws so you can pick one on the fly. So when you have that random occurrence, when your player wants to talk to some seemingly random person on the street, boom, you can just look down at your sheet, pick a flaw, boom give that person a flaw. Boom. And then boom. Your world is more real, your players more immersed. Okay, so what are some examples of good flaws? Uh, let's do this. Drug addiction. Blatant racism. Dude is a hypochondriac. Always skips out on her shift early. Mm-mm. Obsessive compulsive. Manic depressive. ADHD. Basically any behavioral disorder. Maybe they're speaking common as their second language. It's like, so they're, they're, so they're speaking uncommon. 
Want a tip for making your world more realistic? Delete common as a language. He's in love with a married woman. She is in love with a married man. Maybe their shop is going out of business, but they don't want to tell anybody. But you notice something's wrong. Likes One Direction. Only posts a YouTube video like every three months. What a prick. In debt to a very powerful person. In debt to a not so powerful person. Deafness. Blindness. They're mute. Completely illiterate. He's a eunuch. She wants to be a soldier and fight, but that's just not the norm in the village she lives in. He is not a skilled warrior, and he should be, because that's the norm of the village he lives in. But all he wants to do is raise his kids. And I could go on for days. But for now, just start writing these down, and think of a whole bunch of other ones. Nowadays, your resources are endless. So Tommy, I hope that helped answer your question. Give your NPCs and villains flaws. Let me know how that works for you. Question number two. This comes from Maddox XXV or uh, like Maddox 25, or Madox 25. I digress. Madox XX5 asks, do you believe there can be sad moments in an RPG if the right music was on and no one tried to ruin it with a wisecrack? Short answer, yes, absolutely. I've seen lots of moments in the games that I run where the players feel sadness, and as a player, I have played in games and experienced things that made me feel sad. Notice how I didn't say characters. You want the players to feel sad, not the characters. Anybody can say their character feels sad. And there are a lot of ways to accomplish this. And you're definitely on the right track. Music is one of them. I say experiment with music, but I have a couple tips for you when you find yourself looking for that next mood setting song that you're gonna play in front of your players. First, make it something a little obscure. Something not many people have heard of. Because if you put on something from Lord of the Rings, everybody's gonna know it's from Lord of the Rings. And trust me, someone will say, that's from Lord of the Rings. And then your mood just got smashed over the head with a bottle of tequila. And I would, I would imagine that that would hurt. So when you pick music, no matter the genre, do it on something like Spotify or Pandora. And secondly, play it at a very, very low volume. Low. What? What? I mean it. Make sure that the music isn't blocking out your players, and then turn it down a little bit more because music cannot create the mood. Your players do that. And if you put something sad or angsty or action-packed in the background, even in a very low volume, very low, it will make it easier for your players to create that mood. So yeah, something obscure at low volume. Another piece of advice is this. If you wanna make a moment in your game really sad, you don't do that when that moment arrives. You do it by building up to that moment. So when I try to invoke sadness in my games, oftentimes it's because an NPC died. In order to create a feeling of sadness amongst your players because of the death of an NPC, you need your players to love that NPC. How do you do that, Barker? I'm so glad you asked. Honestly, there are tons of ways to do it, so I'm just gonna give you one. And trust me, it works every time. Have an NPC be completely inspired by one of your players, like to the point of idolizing them. Also remember the first question in this video? Give them a flaw. A player just won't be able to resist the idea of an imperfect NPC that wants to do better and is completely inspired by that player's character. That player's character will do everything they can to save this NPC if they're in danger. So if they die, music or no music, it's gonna be sad. And then it's time for the uppercut. Before the game, make a character sheet of that NPC. And once they die, take the character sheet out, fold it in half, and give it to that player. <sighs> you know? <sighs> cool? And the third and final tip I will give you, Matt, Maddox25, is to not take yourself too seriously. I know, it's difficult. Being a GM, we want to be like Tolkien. We want to create our world, we want our players to love it, and our players to take it seriously. So when one of the players makes a wisecrack or a joke about something that, that we worked really hard on, yeah, it kind of sucks. But it's at these points when you should try to remember that if your player is laughing, that means your player is having fun. Even when they're laughing at your expense. Of course, uh, if they do it all the time, they could just be a dick. But either way, don't take yourself so seriously, laugh at their jokes, and do your best to have fun yourself. 
Because I don't agree with that whole philosophy of we are the GM, so it doesn't matter if we're having fun, our job is to make the players have fun and that's it. I call BS. I completely disagree with that because if you're not having fun, chances are your players aren't going to either. And that is the point of role playing, is for everybody to just have a good time. Okay, so I was going to end the video right now, but instead I kind of want to stick with this whole kind of setting the mood type of idea. And for that, I just have a couple more tips for you that you can use during your next game, and hopefully it'll work really well. But either way, you should let me know how it went if you decide to use it. So here it is. Use your body and use your voice. First, your body. A lot of people have problems with players not listening to the GM or talking over the GM. And if that's the case for you, the first step would be to make sure you're not talking too much. If you are talking more than your players, that's a bad thing. Tune it down. But if you're not talking too much, and maybe you just have, I don't know, a uh, self-centered player, or too many players, which can be a big problem, then try this. Whenever I'm not talking, I sit down. And all I do is watch the players. But when it's time for me to say something that's pretty important, I stand up. Like this. Now, it might not completely work at first, but over time, your players will start to get used to it. So when you stand up, consciously or subconsciously, they will know, oh, it's time to listen. And it honestly helps so much more if you don't talk very often. So that's how to use your body. And second was using your voice. Now, one way you can do this is by using accents. And you can talk like this if you like. You do not know who you are messing with today, son. I'm just an old man trying to make his way in a broken world. Kids these days and their music. What a chipper day it is. Nice weather. Hello. Hello. <clears throat> and you should try doing that, because, you know, it's usually awesome. If you end up sucking at it, or your players keep making fun of you, or you, you know, just make fun of yourself, or if it just keeps making you laugh, then don't do it, because it's just interrupting your game. But I think there are two very important ways to speak to your players. I call them active speech and passive speech. And this is absolutely how I talk to my players all the time. Let's say my players are walking through the woods. I might stay seated for this, and I would say something like, the earth beneath you crunches and cracks and splinters with every step as you walk through these woods, like that of a giant inadvertently smashing some tiny little world. But it's not the sound that gets your attention, as much as it is the smell. The smell of weak old mildew, clinging with all of its might to the trees that are currently surrounding you and blocking out the sun above. Passive voice. And then, you know, before they know it, when they least expect it, BANG! Make a dexterity saving throw. Hurry, hurry, roll it, hurry. Before you know it, you're surrounded by seven extremely built men just clad in chainmail. What do you do? That's active voice. You put the table to sleep, and then you wake them up. I mean it. I want you to act like your table is under attack. Like this battle is really happening. You will not regret it. Whew. So that was a lot of information for one video. But I hope it helped to kind of make up for my absence. I haven't been here in a while, and I know that. But no matter what, I will always come back, and I will always do everything I can to help you become a better GM. So until next time, take this info to the bank. As always, if you have questions, comments, or suggestions for future videos, post them down there in the comments. Hey, that wasn't very nice to say. Godspeed, friendlies.